you guys i hope everything is going well happy september or whenever you're watching this um i'm super excited to show you one of my favorite cheats in after effects it's a really fun effect called cc kaleida and not to be confused with kalika which is me hi all right so let's take a look at what we're going to make here is the kaleidoscope loop that I have made. And I'm just playing that back. And it's not real time as we can see from the info window. Hi, Reiko. Hi, Heather. Hi, Carol. So glad you guys could join us. And I showed this to my student, Morgan, and she just freaked out completely she was like oh my gosh it's like you're cheating like how could this be so incredibly easy and the answer is yes it totally can be super easy as long as you know the right things to use okay so let me show you my inspiration for this particular image here um i've got right here this matthew barney uh, photo and this was the color inspiration for my kaleidoscope okay so the way that I was able to put this thing together was like this to start off with I'm gonna make a brand new composition okay so here we go I'm gonna go to composition new and feel free to play along if you'd like and my preset um, they don't have an Instagram preset in After Effects, so I'm going to start with the next best thing, which is HDTV 24. Okay, and then in the duration area, I'm just going to type in 300. Um, and that's like just kind of a nice round number. I don't know how long this is going to last. It could be longer. It could be shorter. Up at the very top where we have our basic section here, I'm going to change the width to 1080. Okay, and the um, 1080 by 1080 is our Instagram square, and that's the size that I want to create my composition at. The background color, I'm going to leave it at the default of black, and I hit OK. Wait for it. There we go. All right, so it's just black. And I wanna bring in my Matthew Barney picture, but I don't actually wanna show it in, uh, oh, I don't even know if I can show it in YouTube. Let's just sneak it in there and grab some colors from it, shall we? All right, so I'm gonna throw in Matthew Barney. This is from Cree Master. And to make sure that Matthew Barney doesn't actually export with my video, I'm gonna right click on Matthew Barney's layer. And I'm gonna set it to a guide, okay? And a guide layer just means that you can use it while you're working in After Effects. And, oh, hi, Tryon. Uh, and uh, you can use the image while you're in After Effects, but nobody else is gonna see it when you export it, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some colors from this and I'm going to be real simple about it. Okay. I'm going to choose the colors using just some swatches because this way I can just keep making more colors. So layer new solid and I'm going to take my eyedropper tool and I'm just going to come over here and choose a blue and I'm going to make this kind of small. It's going to be like 200 by 200 and if you're playing along with me, feel free to drop a message into the chat. If you are confused at any point, just you know, stop, type it into the chat. If you're watching the replay, you can leave me a comment and I'll be happy to respond to you. All right, so here is my first color and I'm just gonna move that over a little bit. And my computer's running kind of slow because I've got a uh, bunch of things going on here um, between the YouTube live stream and OBS, which is actually facilitating the live stream um, and being on camera. It's just like a lot for the computer to process. So I just reduced my resolution to quarter, okay? Next, I'm going to um, just duplicate that little solid. So I go to the edit menu and I go to duplicate. I'm gonna move it over and I'm gonna go to layer, solid settings, and just grab up the eyedropper. Now I could be doing this with the shape drawing tool, but 
For some reason, I just really like solids. Okay, so now I have Matthew Barney's skin color, which um, my student Loretta likes to call Matthew Barney pink, patent pending. Um, and then I'm gonna duplicate that again, just using Command or Control D and move that over and Command Shift Y or Control Shift Y on a PC. And then I can come in here and maybe get the lip color. Oh, not quite there. Let's try that again. Just gonna zoom in. And if you ever wanna just like get a high res little section, you can use this region of interest section. And I'm just gonna high res up this little area. It's very CSI, right? Like CSI says the uh, license plate is blurry, let's enhance. Okay, so here we go. And then I'm just gonna command or control shift I, uh, Y I mean, and then grab up the eyedropper tool and look at that great like teal blue for the uh, eye color. Now, if you're just joining me right now, all I'm doing is I'm picking my colors that I'm going to be using for my kaleidoscope from this Matthew Barney image. And I'm just going to pick like five or six colors, really. The next color I'm going to pick, and I just command or control D to uh, duplicate this solid. Alternatively, of course, edit duplicate. And I'm going to grab my solid settings once more. I'm going to grab that lip color. Yeah, there we go. And I think I'll grab this like nightgown color as well. So just one more duplicate and then fix the solid settings here, okay? All right, so that's not quite white. It's like a like bluish white, yay. All right, so now I have all my colors. Now, when I'm doing motion design, I'm, those of you who've had me as an instructor would know that I am obsessed with scripts. And remember when the iPhone came out, there was an app for that? Well, in After Effects, there's a script for that. And that's because while After Effects is a really wonderful program, I mean, it can do some really amazing things in terms of motion design and character animation, it's got a lot of problems. And so After Effects users around the world have created these patches for After Effects called scripts. And there's a script store, just like how there's an app store. And so I've downloaded this really useful, whoops, hello, sorry. Um, I've downloaded this really useful script. It's called Swatcheroo. And I'll link you guys to it. Um, in the chat, here it is, Swatcheroo. Okay, and Swatcheroo allows you to actually like select swatches because I don't know if you've noticed this, but After Effects doesn't actually have like a swatches panel. Like there's a library panel, um, but there's not a swatches, which is sort of annoying. So you, I use Swatcheroo pretty often whenever I'm dealing with vector style animations. So um, Swatcheroo, you can find it on aescripts.com. And again, I'll put that into the description so that you can take a look. And when you go to aescripts.com, it's very much like the app store. You just type in Swatch. This can really be a money pit, by the way. Like they have a Black Friday sale every year and I swear I like end up spending a good amount of money <laughs> on scripts every year because they really do speed up automated tasks. Um, so this guy right here is Swatcheroo. So um, with Swatcheroo, what you can do, and it's 15 bucks, it's not bad. What you can do is um, you can add a swatch to here pretty easily. So you can, uh, let's see, apply the color, remove the color, change the color using Swatcheroo. All right, and so you can expect a tutorial coming up on that pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I think it's basically like, you you pick it with the, the little swatch thing and then like, there you go. It like adds it to your swatch panel. Okay, all right, you guys are probably like, come on, let's get on with this, let's see what this effect can do. So here are my swatches. I'm just gonna, I had another one here somewhere. Oh yeah, that one got hidden there. 
There we are. Hi. Okay. So I'm going to create the background as this main blue color, okay? The main blue color. So that's going to be this lighter color here, all right? And I also want all these swatches to be guides. So guide layer. And then they won't export. And I'm going to turn off Matthew Barney's image. And now I have my swatches. And I'm going to go to layer, new, solid, okay? The solid color is going to be this first swatch. And I can rename it right up here, BG. Fabulous. And it's super small. And that happens to me all the time. So you just have to go to layer menu, go to solid settings, and make it comp size. All right. And because it's my background, I don't want to mess with it. So I'm going to just drag it to the very bottom. And I'm going to lock it. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some glyphs. Now, the reason why I need to create glyphs is because I want my kaleidoscope to be based on something. And this composition here is really going to be our source for our kaleidoscope. So I need a nice, big, bold, chunky font to work with. Let me just close my swatch here. And here's my type tool. And in my character window, I'm going to go over and I'm going to choose something nice and bold or black. All right. And I want my type to show up right in the middle of the screen so I can go to layer, new text. And when you do this, it automatically makes the text pop right into the middle of the screen, which is really, really nice because then you don't have to like do math or anything. And I also want my paragraph window to be open, which it is. It's set to center text. And now I want this to be much bigger than it is. Holy crap, that's like super small. So let's just roll that value bigger. Roll and roll and roll and okay, much bigger. And I really like using the glyphs, glyphs meaning characters that are um, generally used for curse words in comic strips. So I just hold the shift key down and I'm gonna type, um, whoops. I didn't want to type the size of the font there. Let's just, uh, okay, so now I've got this nice big font and then I click right in there. And I'm gonna hold shift and type like just one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and don't worry about your kerning or anything else like that. But what you can do is just selectively choose different glyphs and take your eyedropper tool and just choose different colors for them. Okay, so this guy is going to be this color, and this guy is going to be, um, let's do this color. So I'm doing all this with the type tool, just selecting with the type tool, then going over to the character panel, grabbing up the eyedropper, and then coming over here and being like, hey, let's use that light blue, and then over here. Um, you know, you may disagree with me, but I'm gonna actually use my original color. And I'm gonna tell you why, okay? I'm gonna tell you why. The reason why is because we're also gonna outline these in a minute. Okay, so now I have my weird glyph panel, right? So I'm gonna take this last glyph and I'm gonna put an outline on it. And if you've never put an outline on text, it's probably because you have good taste. And generally speaking, outline text looks god awful. But when you're using text as an abstract element, it just adds a little bit more complexity to it. So I'm gonna click over in the character panel to the little stroke area, and then I'm going to go over and choose one of the colors from my palette here. So maybe I'll choose this dark red and then I can increase the stroke width by increasing this value here. See that? So now I have like an outline around the text. There we go. So that's not too terrible. And then maybe I also want to put like a blue outline around this one. So with that outline selected, I'm just gonna go over to the eyedropper and I'm going to choose this same like darkish blue and then increase the stroke value. And you can choose a different stroke value than what was used at the end there, okay? Now, if you have any questions, of course, just drop them into the chat. 
Um, okay, so there's my text, but I'm noticing that the text isn't exactly centered. I'm also noticing that my autosave like keeps popping up. This is really annoying. So let's turn off the autosave from being so frequent. So I go to the edit menu, I go to preferences. If you're on a Mac, it's gonna be in your After Effects menu and I'm just gonna go to general. Oh, sorry, autosave, there we go. Clearly I haven't used this in a little while. So my autosave is coming up and in my autosave, I'm just going to reduce the duration of my autosaving. I'm waiting for it. Where'd it go? There it is. Save every five minutes. Really, guys, how about every 10 minutes? I think that's sufficient. I hit OK, and now here we are. So as I mentioned, it's not quite centered. So I'm going to take this text, and I'm going to go to the Align window. Now, I always have the Align window open. If you don't, that's OK. It's not a default. Just go to your Window menu and choose Align. And it's not at like the very top. It's like down a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to align to composition center uh, horizontally and center vertically. Okay, and this composition, I'm actually going to have this be my um, pre-composition for my characters. Okay, and this is a little tip that I learned from my student, Heather S, because Heather F S is, uh, she's very clever. She doesn't realize how clever she is, but she is. So I always start my, my pre-compositions with the letters PC. I used to end them that way, but that doesn't quite make sense, especially if you have a lot of compositions and you wanna be able to see at a glance what's a pre-composition and what's not. So I just do PC dash, and I'm gonna call this glyph graphics, glyphs two, okay? And I hit OK. And I'm going to take PC Glyphs 2 and I'm going to drag it into a new composition that's the same dimensions as my old one. Now, if I drag this right on top of this create a new composition icon, that's just going to confuse me. So I'm going to make a brand new composition that's empty. And then right here, in the composition settings, I'm gonna call this um, Trippy Loop. Fabulous. All right. Oh, hi, Donna. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my PC Glyphs 2 and drag it on the left hand side here, okay? Now, you can drag pre compositions and elements pretty much anywhere, right? Like you could drag it over here, but then it's like wherever you released your mouse. Or you could drag it over here, but then it lands whenever you released your mouse. And that's kind of a problem too, right? So what you should do is drag it over here on the left. And the way that I remember it, it's super cheesy, is like Beyonce's boyfriend stuff. Everything you own is in a box to the left, to the left. So yeah, it's to the left. Now this, you might be wondering like, wait, you had like a whole bunch of other layers. What happened to them? Well, because I had set these swatches to be um, guide layers, they didn't show up when I pre-composed them into here. It's sort of amazing. I'm gonna change my zoom so that we can all see this much better. Ha, ah, much better. Okay, and then here comes the magic. You guys ready? We're gonna go over to the effects and presets window. And in the effects and presets window, I am going to type in the name of our effect. Now, what some folks don't realize about the effects and presets window is that it's not Google. Google autocorrects. It, if you type in something the wrong way, it says, did you mean blah -de blah And you're like, yes, of course, that's what I meant. I didn't mean beatloaf. I meant meatloaf. You know, it, it gets it. After Effects is not Google. So if you type into effects and presets, um, like if instead of Gaussian blur, if I typed in Gaussian blur, it's like, I don't know, I got nothing. Similarly, if you type in kaleidoscope as if it starts with the same four letters as my name, K-A-L-I, uh, it's gonna come up blank. So when in doubt, just 
type really slow and if you're poor at spelling that's okay we can't all be good at all the things just go to google type in the name of the effect that you think you want and then let google correct you and then come back here okay all right fantastic so i found cc kaleda and that's what we want to apply and i'm just going to drag and drop it right on top of my composition whoa right off the bat it did something amazing now the thing that it did was it just applied the effect and if i just play it down nothing happens the reason why nothing happens friends is because this is not animated some effects come with their own animation like um for example ripple ripple comes with its own animation you apply ripple on something and you'll see something happen once you adjust certain effects uh ripple see misspelling like if i put ripple on here and i just increase the radius and i play it back you'll see that it's actually moving right like it's rippling but kaleidoscope doesn't do that so you have to add animation to it so let's go back over kal double click and here we are so it's the center property that you want to mess with okay and when in doubt you can always just like use the scientific method if you don't remember the scientific method basically what you're doing is you are trying out one thing at a time kind of like if you have allergies but you're not sure what you're allergic to maybe you would just remove one food group at a time or you would remove all of them and then just start over with one thing at a time right so you just you got to start um just being a little bit methodical about it so the center if i click on this little like target looking thing and then i come over here Ooh, look at all this. This is kind of cool, right? So as I drag it across my glyphs, we start to see some animation, okay? And then if I wanted to change my size, okay? So this is kind of tight, right? It looks a little bit like grandpa's uh, wallpaper in the billiards room. So if we increase the size here, Look at that. Now we have fewer of the same pattern. We can also change the mirroring. So if we go over to the little size area and we, ch sorry, go over to the mirroring area, the default is flower. But if I go to unfold, it looks very different. If I go to wheel, it looks very different. Likewise, fish head. Why would they call it? I guess it kind of looks like a fish head. Um, we've got can mesh. I don't know what that means, but it's interesting looking. Dia cross, that's cool. But you don't really know what it is until you take that center and just drag it. And like, look how interesting this is, right? Like, it's really quite cool. Um, so yeah, let me go in and start messing with this a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna move it all the way over. And the key to getting a loop in this situation is to really just start on a solid color and end on a solid color, which you might be thinking like, oh, if she starts and ends on a solid color, then isn't her Instagram poster image gonna be just a solid color? No, I have a fix for that. So anyways, we're starting on a solid color for now, and then we're gonna fix it later. So here's what we do, we have this um, over here on the solid color. I'm going to turn on the center stopwatch. And if I hit letter U, look, it showed up in the timeline. That's so nice. And then at 150 frames, I think that's sufficient time. I'm just going to drag this all the way across. And there is literally like no wrong answer here. Like you can try out different stuff after the center has been animated. So I could play this back, just hitting space bar here, friends. And that's interesting, but I'm not totally sold on this like little square pattern thing. I don't know, it's, it's not totally my favorite. So what if I changed this mirroring to flipper? Oh, that's interesting. So that made like stripes. But I'm starting to see those glyphs, which may or may not work for you. It doesn't work for me. 
Starlish, not to be confused with starfish. I kind of like that. I think that's quite beautiful. So starlish is the answer. And it looks like starlish kind of finishes a little bit early. So let's just revisit our keyframes a little bit. And whenever I'm working with one of these effects and I change the settings and I'm like, wait, this, uh, this didn't start where I used, where it used to start. I just have to add extra keyframes sometimes. So I could just change this value, but I found like the frame right before stuff starts to appear. So I just rewind to right there. You see this little area? We have these little arrows going back and forth and we have this little empty, insignificant seeming diamond. And if I click on that diamond, it's going to create a keyframe. And that keyframe is right here and I can actually delete the previous keyframe and just move that new keyframe over to the left. As I drag it, if I hold the shift key down, it's gonna snap it to start at the beginning of the timeline. And then I'm gonna drag forward some more, some more, some more. Looky, looky, here we go. And then that's where it ends, right? So what this diamond area does is it creates a brand new keyframe at the current value. I'm gonna say that again a different way. So you see how this looks right now? We wanna create a keyframe for how this looks right now. And in order to do that, all you gotta do is click in the little diamond, okay? And then I can select this last dude, hit the delete or backspace key, and then I can shorten my work area like this. Okay, the work area is this blue bracket. Alternatively, wherever my playhead is on that last keyframe, and remember you can go between keyframes by hitting J and K, I can just hit letter N for end. I know it's end doesn't actually start with letter N unless you're five, but N for end of work area. And then I can hit the space bar and it'll play it back. And that, friends, is my trippy looping pattern. But you know me, I like presenting options. I like people to see, like, not just this, but like, what if we did it a little bit different? Then what? Well, let me show you. All right, so this is our first option. So I'm gonna go over to my project window and I'm gonna call this trippy loop one. Now, a lesser, after Effects artist would go through this whole process of duplicating this composition. And then when you duplicate it, look what happens. Uh, so I have it selected in my project window. Check this out. If I go duplicate, now I got trippy loop one and trippy loop two, but with trippy loop two, the comp that's inside in it, don't worry about the effect and stuff, but the pre-comp that's inside it is still the same one from trippy loop one. So if you want to have a unique pre-composition here, you actually got to duplicate this too, all right? So this is one of those times where I wish that real life imitated After Effects because you can always right click in After Effects and say reveal layer source in project. It'll actually take you to the place where it came from. So like, you know, when I'm organizing my children's toys, if I find like a, a checker, I, I wish I could just like press a button on it and say, show me where it came from. But anyways, here, it showed me where it came from. And now in the pre comp, uh, sorry, in the project window, I can go to the edit menu and duplicate it one time. So now I have two of this PC Glyphs 3. But if I clip, click the first one, see how up atop it says used two times. And if I click the little triangle by it, it says it's used in trippy loop one and two. But if I click on Glyphs 3, which I duplicated from Glyphs 2, the little triangle says not used. So what I'm going to do is take this here and just option or alt drag and swap it out. So you just have to have it selected in your project window, selected in your timeline, and option or alt drag down and it'll replace. So now when I click on PC Glyphs 3, it says it's used one time. Oh, it's used in Trippy Loop 2, nice. And then this guy also used one time in Trippy Loop 1. 
Yeah, see, you see where I'm driving here? Because now I can change everything about this variation. And what do I mean by everything? Oh, I mean everything. Let me show you. So if I go into this effect, you could just hit letter E for effect, and then you can see this um, effect name here. And if I double click on the effect name, it's gonna open it up in the effect controls window. So now I have my center, my size, etc., etc., etc. I can hit letter U to see my keyframes properly in my timeline because when it's collapsed like this, see these little dots? useless you can't move them they're, they're no good but if you select it and you hit letter u you you will be able to see all the keyframes there so now i see all my keyframes fantastic and i'm going to click on the center value and i can see where it's crossing through okay and it's crossing through if i look at the coordinates i know some of you guys are like kabika again with the math like i come from a family of scientists we did math at the dinner table like seriously. So it's like around 600 pixels down. So let's take a look. Let's go um, into PC Glyphs 3. Oh, in case if you were like, whoa, what was that? I clicked on the composition mini flow chart. Yeah, look at that. It shows you like a whole map of how your compositions are related to each other. It's kind of nice. Okay, so right here I have my um, my like pre-composition and I want to show my rulers so I'm going to go to view menu I'm going to do show rulers and see my rulers right here this is the 600 mark right because it goes 0 to 200 to 400 to 600 I can pull a guide down because remember that's where like our center was going through and one thing I kind of like to do I like to um, see both of my comps next to each other. So I like to see my pre-composition and I like to see my main composition at the same time, okay? Hey, Lenine, great to see you. All right, so I'm gonna lock this viewer, okay? I lock the viewer. Then I go back using the little map thingy to Trippy Loop 2. Hey, Trippy Loop 2, where are you? It happens sometimes. You like go back to the other one thing using the map, and then you're like, dude, where did the pre comp like where did the composition go? If that happens to you, don't despair. There's this little hidden button over here on the far right. And just click on that guy. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Oh, <laughs> it's taking a moment. That's what happened. All right, so now I, this other tab opened up, okay? So now I have two tabs and I can lock this guy and I can drag it over to the right. And you see this strip? Release on the strip. Wait for it. Oh my gosh, side by side view people. This is so nice. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna fit. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna fit. And now we're gonna do some magic. So I'm gonna take these glyphs right here, right? My best friend glyphs. And I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different to them. I'm gonna duplicate them. So I'm gonna take my edit menu and I'm gonna duplicate. So now I have two layers identical the same. Take my rectangle tool, okay? And draw a box around just like the top part of it, okay? You have to have the layer selected in order for this to work because otherwise it's just not gonna work, okay, friends? Um, and I'm gonna set the, uh, yeah, I guess the mask mode can be add. Let's see what happens if we turn off the other guy. Do we see any change? Not really. All right. So I put it there, but it could be, I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. So I'm going to take my type tool and I'm going to change up some colors, okay? So I'm going to select this first one and I'm just going to change the outline color. And I can use the eyedropper right here and just be like, dude, you're going to be this other color. All right. And then I'm going to select this guy and have it click the fill, click the eyedropper and choose the red and then I'm going to select this guy choose the eyedropper choose the 
other one. I guess I'll choose Matthew Barney pink right here. Okay. And then finally, I'm going to select this last guy. I'm going to swap the colors. Hey, why not? It's an option. And I'm going to make this outline into a different color using the eyedropper. So we'll use like the dark blue. Yeah. And then this guy needs a new, needs a new love. So we'll come over here and maybe grab up this bluish. Okay, now I'm not seeing any changes here and I'm wondering what I can do to make those changes happen. So if I click the word mask, what that does is it selects the whole mask. And then on my keyboard, I can use my shift and arrow keys and just move that stuff up and see if it's giving me any kind of change over here. And I'm not seeing a change. All right, let's change this from full to like third. Yep, still not seeing a change. This is a time when I would actually um, parent the top version to the bottom. And then I'll take this bottom one and I'm just gonna move it. See if we can get some other color happening here, okay? So with my selection tool, I'm just gonna take this bottom one and now that they're connected, if I, sh if I move these down, they're gonna move together. I'm not seeing any change in the color. Now that might have something to do with the preset that I chose, like in terms of the flower and the fish, fish head, whatever that thing was, starlish, that was what it was called. Um, in which case, what we could do is something a little bit different. And for those of you who are really into type, you're, you might get a little grossed out, so <laughs> just bear with me while I do this. So this was about where we were, right? We were about like here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna turn off my mask, just turn it off, okay? We should see PC Glyphs 3. <gasps> Hold on, trippy loop two. Yeah, that is trippy loop two. I don't know what happened. It's just like, show. it's insisting on showing um, like a different, there we go. So now we're getting color. There, okay, so now we're starting to get that second color. What happens if I change this to add now? <gasps> Look, now we have another color happening, okay? So that's one variation. Sorry, I, I had to actually like advance the, the timing. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm messing with it now. See, I have this masked and I'm like, what if I just take that masked section and just offset it a little bit? And it's starting to get really, really interesting over here in our trippy loop too, right? Like it's starting to go all poinsettia on us, which is kind of interesting. So that's an interesting um, variation, right? Like not too bad. Okay, let me try one other here. So this time I'm gonna use a script and the script I'm gonna use is called True Comp Duplicator. So also on the script store, True Comp Duplicator, Duplicator. Okay, this is also not like Google. So it'll find that true comp duplicator. And the nice thing about true comp duplicator, it is a pay what you wish uh, script. And I love pay what you wish scripts because you can test them out, see if they work for you. And if you find that they are really useful and that you're gonna use them again, um, it lets you uh, like pay for it later. Right? Name your own vice. How nice is that? It's so like fair. <laughs> All right. So anyways, I'm going to take trippy loop two and I'm going to duplicate it using true comp duplicator. Okay. And there's true comp duplicator. It's coming up. Where are you? There you are true comp duplicator. So right here, this is my true comp duplicator window. 
And I'm just going to say increment last number in names. And that's it. I just select trippy loop to increment last, one copy, duplicate. There we go. Cool. So now I have trippy loop three, which has PC glyphs four in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the same side by side view with that one. I'm going to show you another variation. Ready? So here's PC glyphs four. And I'm just going to reset this guy. So I turned off the parent and link. And I'm just going to select the position property of this guy. And I know there's no keyframe, but you can actually click the word position and then copy it. And then you can select the top layer and you can paste that position right onto it. Look at that. OK, and then I'm going to turn off or disable the mask. And then I had warned you that I was going to do something that would offend my graphic design buddies here. Um, I'm going to shrink this. I know, I'm sorry. Um, and the way I'm going to do it is using an effect called Simple Choker. And I did promise that I was going to do a, another side-by-side -side view. So let's just close. Ooh. Don't close that. Okay, so <laughs> let's go to our little map. Trippy loop three. Click the little comp button to bring forward its comp viewer. Lock it. Move it over. Come in. Here we go. Ta-ta. Get over there. All right, and then I'm just going to move my playhead so I can actually see what it's doing. And go into the, my... PC Glyphs 4 for it. And in my effects, I'm going to type in Simple Choker. I'm sorry, graphic designers. You should never do this if your text is supposed to be legible. And I'm just going to choke my mat to the right, and it sucks in the edges. And let's just advance our playhead a little bit and see if that did anything. Yeah, it's starting to do something. And the, this is what's known as experimental animation. So you gotta like mess with stuff. So when you mess with stuff, I know, Lenine, it's horrible. It looks so bad if you look at this. Like I would, no, I, I would fail any student who showed up with that kind of a situation. Um, alternatively, I guess you could use a thinner font. That would be another way to deal with it. Uh, let's try that though. So we're trying things, friends. We're seeing what works and what looks terrible. Um, like that looks interesting. Like the edges didn't go to complete crap the way they did over here. So let's turn off simple choke. It's an option. It's not our favorite, but it's an option. I'm going to go over to character and I'm going to change black to regular. And yeah, that was a bad idea. So I'm going to undo that. I think we were, oh. That was actually kind of interesting. Hold on. Something happened there. Let's undo. So this is what it was, right? And then when I went from black to regular, look what happened in my composition. Wait for it. Like that's kind of beautiful, even though this is a hot mess. So like, don't knock it till you tried it, friends. Um, let me take my type tool. It looks like there's some kind of like horrible little point three. Yeah, look at that crappy little stroke overfill that's showing up and making me unhappy. I just got rid of that. And this guy doesn't have it. And this guy doesn't have it. I'm like really picky about really specific things. Okay, so anyways, that looks really interesting. Um, so I'm digging that. That's a pretty cool option. And then finally, I'm going to take Trippy Loop 3, and I'm going to duplicate it just one last time. So I'm going to go over to my um, scripts, and I'm going to go to True Comp Duplicator. And by True Comp Duplicator, it's like, basically implying that your regular comp duplication process isn't truly duplicating everything inside it. It's like, yes, 
we've cloned him, but they are using the exact same organs inside of him. Like, nah, no, nah, that's not a true clone. Uh, it's more like a conjoined twin. Anyway, so um, incrementing last num last number in names, duplicating selected again, and then this time, I'm gonna bring our buddy Matthew Barney back into the fold. So here's Trippy Loop 4, and inside of Trippy Loop 4, let me just close up this, move my playhead forward. I'm gonna double click on that. And all I'm gonna do, friends, I'm gonna take Matt Barney here, I'm gonna unguide his butt and the rest of him, drag him up to where the rest of the text thing was, and let's just like mat him. Like, why not? So I'm gonna turn on his visibility. I'm gonna scale him. Oh, he's so small. Let's see. Or I was gonna make him a mat, but he's like not that big. So I'm just gonna put him in there. I think it would be interesting if he just like made a little appearance somewhere. So like maybe in here. And I definitely want like some eyes and lips showing up. And then I take my, um, I'll just use the rectangle tool and just do that. It's like a little Easter egg for nerds in the know. Like, hey, were you looking for Matthew Barney? There he is. So I don't need this uh, empty text layer that I created by accident. But if I go into Trippy Loop 4, he's not gonna show up right away, friends. But at a certain point, oh my gosh, we're starting to see some photo. That is so creepy. There was an eye. Did you see the eye? Holy crap, I was hoping we would get the eye in there and we totally did. That is so satisfying, am I right? Like super satisfying to just have that little Easter egg in there. I feel like I need to put it in like somewhere else where it's like especially boring, like maybe over here. So if I go over to my effect controls and I click on the kaleidoscope effect, it's like right here, right here, okay? So remember that little spot? I'm gonna go back into my pre-composition and I'm gonna move Matthew over there also. So just gonna take this layer and I'm gonna duplicate it using Edit Duplicate. Now, um, you have to be a little bit careful because if you have a mask on a layer and the mask is selected and then you go Edit Duplicate, it's actually gonna duplicate the mask and you'll be like, wow, that was not useful. So what you should do instead is click the name and make sure the name is totally highlighted and then go to Edit Duplicate and then take the selection tool and move that little guy over we wanted him to be like right here and I'm gonna show you another one of my fun little tools here let's find like I don't want just his eyes again I want something a little different check it so we're on layer two right I'm gonna go over to the pan behind tool and I'm gonna drag that upward and I just really want like this weird area of like chest and thighs and hands to show up in there because I think that's going to be super weird and fun. And then when I go back to Trippy Loop 4, oh my gosh, there it is, friends. That looks really rather pornographic and I think it's fun. Um, so yeah, this is, I think this is the winning this is the winning ticket right here. I really like this particular version, but I wouldn't have gotten to this particular version if I hadn't made several messes, not least of which involved that simple choker effect that made Lenine squirm. Uh, thank you, Lenine, for that very satisfying chat. <laughs> so anyways, this is basically a done loop. But the problem with it is that if we threw this on Instagram, it would have like the most boring poster frame ever. So here's my problem, friends. Like when I first started working in uh, Instagram, I didn't, I wasn't totally aware 
of the whole poster frame thing. And you can set the poster frame to something other than the very first frame of your video, but I didn't know that. And so my very first animation that I made started and ended on white. And so my very first poster frame was just white and like, nobody liked my first Instagram post because it didn't look like anything. So I don't want that to happen to you. That would be so sad. So once you have your loop that starts and ends on the same color, what you should totally do is um, shorten your work area so it only includes that little section and then go to the composition menu and just trim the comp to the work area because the work area is that area that's just going to keep playing back. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to um, find like a nice looking frame here. Okay, and this trips people up when I do this next part. So pay attention, all right? So we need to find like a beautiful frame. And I think I'm gonna choose like a nice, like flesh colored something or other that gives a hint of where I'm going with this. Oh yeah, here we start to get interesting. There's like a weird eye happening in there. I quite like it. It almost looks like a Moorish pattern anyways. And all I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna take this whole animation and I'm gonna cut it right there, like this. See my hands? And then I'm gonna swap beginning and end. That's it, that's all I'm gonna do. So what ends up happening is that the blue part is gonna play back like kind of middle endish of the video, not very endish or very beginning of the video. So you might be like, but Kalika, there's no razor blade tool in After Effects. No, there's not, but there is the edit split layer command. And the split layer command just cuts your layer into two chunks right where your playhead is at, okay? And make sure you're with your selection tool when you do this next bit, all right? You just take this first chunk and you drag it earlier you hold the shift key and that's gonna snap it to begin at the beginning. And then you take this guy and you hold the shift key and you drag it in the middle and it's gonna snap it so it ends at the end. And look, my blue, my full blue frame doesn't happen until the very middle, okay? Now, if you have like a little bit more than just pure blue, you should probably shorten that stuff up. So yeah, I've got like pure blue for like a minute. Oh, not a minute, but like quite a few frames. So I'm just gonna move this forward, forward. There we go. I'm just gonna shorten that. So now it's like, it's blue for a frame. And then I'm going to shorten that last little bit right there. Yeah, so select that last chunk. And I want the whole loop to end on that very last frame there. So I select this and here's the key command. You ready for this? It's I-B-O-N. I'm gonna type this into the chat here, okay? I-B-O-N, I-B-O-N, okay? And what that does, um, you select the first layer, you do I, and then you type letter B. That's, that sets the beginning of your work area. Then you select the part that happens later and you hit O, to take your playhead to the out point of the layer. Then you hit letter N and it sets the end of your work area, okay? And then you go to composition, trim comp to work area again. Yeah, and this is like totally wild and I really like it. Like it doesn't just have those few colors that I chose at the beginning because we integrated Matt Barney like into the rest of the thing and I don't, think I'm in violation of terms of use. I hope I'm not. Uh, but yeah, it looks pretty cool, right? Brilliant. So the last thing I got to do is export to MP4. And the way you export to MP4, fairly straightforward, 
not After Effects used to be able to totally export to MP4 by itself very happily, but it did it really poorly, right? Like you would export to MP4 and you'd be like, wow, this is a giant file and it's not optimized for web. So After Effects was like, you know what? Let's just outsource that. So they outsourced the exporting of MP4s to Media Encoder, which is another product that Adobe makes. So you go to the composition menu, you go to add to render queue. Now, if you haven't saved your project yet, like what is wrong with you? Like you should totally save, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you haven't saved yet. So make sure you do a file, save as, save as, save your project for the love of all things holy. Otherwise, like you'll never be able to go back into it and make changes. And here we go. There's my kaleidoscope folder. If you just like randomly downloaded a photo to your downloads and then imported it, I highly recommend that you collect your files as well before you export. Just do file dependencies, collect files. And I do all this stuff before I export. You know why? Because after I export, I'm just like so excited to share it with everybody that I don't care about archiving. So do the archiving before you share. So then I do collect, I hit collect again and I tell it where I want to collect it. And I'm going to collect it to right in here in my kaleidoscope folder, or desktop, wherever you want. And it just copies all the things over to it, okay? Fabulous. All right, so now I have everything ready to go, except I have to queue this in Media Encoder. So I'm going to click on Media Encoder. It looks like we're going to finish up like right at seven. Okay, so here goes Media Encoder. Where are you, Media Encoder? Get mad. It might be like, oh, there you are. It was on the wrong monitor. Hi. Okay, so that was my old kaleidoscope loop. My new one should show up any minute. Resolve fonts, yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's why it didn't do it let's track in so here's my trippy loop four and I have to queue in AME this is the render queue window okay now um, sometimes it won't let you press Q in AME unless you tell it where to save which is done here don't worry about the settings when you're saving to mp4 you can like set all the settings in media encoder and that's totally fine okay all right I'm waiting Come on. There it is. Hi, Trippy Loop 4. That's what I was looking for. And your default settings should be totally fine. The only problem is that the default settings do come with audio. So if you didn't make like a cool little ambient audio loop to go with your video. Um, oh, you're welcome, Donna. Have a good meeting. Um, so if you don't have audio, just click where it says map source high bit rate and it'll open up your settings window and all you gotta do is uncheck audio. That's it, it's fine, okay? And in order to post to Instagram, remember that unless you've downloaded some sort of special software which allows you to upload directly from your computer, you still, I believe, have to email it to yourself, which is kind of silly, but that's okay. Um, okay, so just turning off the little audio thingy and then hitting OK. And oh, it came back. Did you see that? That little jerk, it turned itself back on. So I gotta, I gotta get back into that anyways. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. All I would do after this is just attach this video to an email, send it to myself, download it on Instagram, download it into my phone and then upload to Instagram that way. Um, if you have any questions, please leave me a note in the chat or you can leave me a comment. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly click the little subscribe button. Tell your friends. I have live streams every Monday night at 6 p.m. I go over cool techniques and motion graphics. Tuesday, and this is all, all times Eastern, um, like New York City time. Tuesdays at 10 a.m. I have a Getting Started series, um, which is Tuesday mornings at, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. There we go. And 
we learn all sorts of different things that have to do with character animation and motion design. So I primarily focus on Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, Illustrator, but I also like dabble in Adobe Animate. I do some stuff using the Photoshop timeline. I have one coming up on digital um, painting in Photoshop, which should be really fun. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you guys around. Don't be a stranger. Sign up for my mailing list if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much, everyone. See you soon. Bye.